Hi, my name is David Griffiths. I'm a Principal Consultant and Director with K3Q Limited, and I'm also a lecturer at the University of Edinburgh. This is our first attempt at a video blog. Uh, it's a way that we wanted to reach out to people beyond the text-based format, and we wanted to talk about what we do and some of the questions that we get posed. Everything we do is based around evidence-based solutions. We're not interested in just opinions. We don't think that that's of use to organisations. What's my opinion versus that of lots of other people? What we're interested in are things like uh, the Knowledge Management Observatory survey that we've had in the field and discussing some of those findings, and also past research that we've been engaged in since 2007. What we're interested in today is what is the future of knowledge management. It's something that we get challenged with and something that we're going to be discussing throughout the year. For example, uh, I'm speaking and doing a workshop at KM Asia in November in Singapore. So this is us and this is our opinion. To strip things back a bit, if we're going to talk about the future of knowledge management, we need to talk about where it's come from. Some of you may already read some of the blog entries that we've done or some of the uh, academic journal articles we've written on the history of knowledge management. It's also been very, very well complemented by people like Patrick Lamb. And what we have found is actually knowledge management, it's been around really since the mid-70s, really only emerging since the late 1980s and coming to prominence really in the 1990s to where we are today. The one thing that comes through is that knowledge as a resource, as an organisational resource and something of economic value, we've been talking about it since the first industrial revolution. People have been looking at ways of how they can coordinate it, how they can actually try and manage that environment. I mean, you can look back at some of the research we've done. Please look at the blog entries. We're talking about things like industrial efficiency engineers. And things like this have evolved through the 30s, the 40s, 50s, 60s to get where we are today with knowledge management. So really, knowledge management has come from something else. It's emerged out of the need to actually look at knowledge as a resource. If we can accept that, then we have to accept that knowledge endures, that need for knowledge endures. The need for organisations to actually try and manage to do something with it, it endures. If we look at the value of Google at the moment, the estimations are that 90% of Google's value evaluation is based on intangibles, the intangible resources such as knowledge. Now if we reflect back on where that was in the 1940s and 1950s, we've seen a shift from that time period where companies were, the company valuations were only based on probably about 30 to 40 percent on intangibles to today where we're seeing as much as, as I said, 90 percent. So I think that we've got to accept right now that actually knowledge management isn't the be-all and end-all. It's emerged out of something else and the need to manage knowledge is a long-term need and it has endured for well over a century now. This brings us to knowledge management today. Knowledge management today, from our experience, our research, there are concerns with it. There are some great surveys that have been done in 2007, 2009 with Baines and Associates, almost 1,500 global executives. Knowledge management ranking 24th out of 25 strategic management tools. High levels of dissatisfaction. And we have to ask ourselves why, if the need for knowledge is so great, what's the problem with knowledge management? Knowledge management at the moment appears to be sitting in isolation. It is something that sits in organisations as, as an operational response to something else. It's not always, can't say in every organisation, but it's not always strategically aligned. It's not being seen as something that is a strategic tool to take an organisation forward. That's a problem. The second thing is that we're dealing with a situation where technology has really dominated the field. Why is that a problem? Technology does not manage knowledge. That's our opinion. Technology facilitates the interaction 
between people who hold knowledge. We can have a whole debate, and this isn't the time or place in such a short blog to be able to discuss the difference between knowledge and information. But when we're talking about data management systems, information management systems, let's talk technology, I don't have a problem. But if we're going to talk knowledge management, for me, we have to be talking about people. And it's also this lack of understanding. If we're talking about senior management, executive management teams, it's the lack of understanding of what knowledge management is. And I've got to tell you now that when we go and speak to organizations, we don't speak about knowledge management anymore. We speak about things like innovation, resilience, sustainability. We don't go in there to talk to them about knowledge management because they don't see the links. And there is a problem. And that's a problem for knowledge management looking to the future. It is when we talk to organizations, when we've done our surveys, we find that too many people see knowledge management as a technology-based solution. Okay, It's something that they get concerned. Are we coming in to actually talk to them about technology frameworks, software packages? No, we're not. There's a fundamental thing that I think we have to put on the line. Knowledge is a complex process. The things that impact knowledge and our creation of knowledge they're non-linear. We have no idea what could impact us on any given day. The people who watch this blog, some people will go away and say that they have been stimulated, that they've learned something from this, that we've actually increased their knowledge on knowledge management. Other people will come away and say, I've learned nothing from this, there's nothing there, and it could be down to simple things like learning styles, what they had for breakfast this morning, who knows? It is too complex. Technology deals in complicated processes, cause and effect. There is a direct link between the output and a variable. That's not how knowledge works. We'll go on in a little bit in this blog to talk about some of the variables or what we call constructs that people involved in knowledge management have to start thinking about. But ultimately, the one thing that we've got to get across, knowledge, a complex process, multiple constructs that interact in a non-linear way that provide an output. You can't control them. Information, complicated process, variables, and you can manage the variables and have direct links between cause and effect. That's our opinion. So, stripping things back, we wanted to know knowledge management, that, that Management of knowledge resources is important. We've demonstrated that. We understand that the need for knowledge as an economic resource endures. So therefore, what's the problem with KM? We stripped everything back, tried to go to a blank sheet of paper, and instead of looking at knowledge management in the organization, we started to look at what actually drives the need for knowledge management. Why should organizations actually engage with it? And this is where we started to take our shift away from speaking about KM. We started to talk about things like adaptive capacity, resilience, sustainability, growth, innovation. Those were the things that when we went to speak with senior management, executive management teams, that's what they started to understand. Now, there are operational benefits. There was a great conversation that uh, Peter and I had with a, a, an oil company in Bahrain, where they turned around and said, this is great. We want to talk to you about the strategic side, but ultimately, we need to know the operational benefit. I've got a manager out there. How will this impact him? What will be the direct output? And we've got to be able to answer those questions as well. And if we're going to tackle those strategic issues, the benefits are going to be improved decision making. I'll give you an, uh, an example. Decision making can impact a lot of other areas. We're dealing at the moment with a public, a public sector organization in the UK where they have a problem where they are gonna be losing almost 25% of their senior management team over the next two to three years. Where the problem becomes there is they're about to, be lo they're about to lose decision making capability. They are about to experience operational lag. They're about to lose knowledge and they're going to have to relearn or reacquire that knowledge. That's a problem. 
So we've had to go in and look at, okay, so we don't lose that de decision-making capability, what can we do? We start looking at things like knowledge footprint or knowledge mapping processes. We start to look at succession planning. We start to look at how we can start to embed that experience, that expertise within a potential set, a succession pool. We start to look at a competency-based approach, not only what these people know, but what makes them special. How have they got this expertise and how have they been elevated into these positions where they are the people that have managed to absorb this, they have become the decision makers, and what makes them good at what they do. We then start to look at how do, the, how do the processes that exist within this particular organization compare to other organizations in similar sectors, but also from comparable sectors so that we can learn from each other. So even something as simple as decision making, there's an operational aspect, there's an operational need to want to engage in knowledge management processes. Our response to all this has been a knowledge management process. But you want to know something? In any of the, in the conversations we've had with this organization, we haven't spoken KM, not once. Because it's not the language that they understand. It's not a concept that they're familiar with, but they understand the need to what becomes to be more sustainable. Less resources available to them, cutbacks in the public sector. They know they need to sustain services. They know they need to do it in a leaner fashion. So they understand that, and they also understand that it's going to make, have an impact on their decision-making capability. We haven't spoken about KM once, and perhaps that's the future of KM. Okay, so back to where we started. What's the future of knowledge management? I don't know. We don't have a crystal ball. Nobody can predict it. What we do know is the need for knowledge endures. We know that we've got a problematic field. We've got something that really has been captured by technology and is being driven by technology. We need to perhaps realign that. We need to realize that it's actually people and people's needs that are at the center of what we're talking about. We're talking about a process that accepts the needs of the organization, the needs of the individuals within that organization, and looks at the processes that binds and enables the two, okay? For us, knowledge management, it's going to change. The history tells us it's going to change. We need to become more educated. We need to get people to understand and get organizations to understand what it is that's actually driving KM. It's not about the need to do a better job for sharing knowledge. That's a response to something else. We've got to understand what that response is. Yet yeah, what is it that drives us to look at improved knowledge sharing? And if we understand that, I think we can do a better job. We also need to understand that things will change, things will evolve. There will, become, there will come a time where there will be a paradigm shift to something else. We need to be the people that are driving forward that paradigm shift. What to call it? Who knows? Who knows what will emerge in the future? We can't predict it. But ultimately, we can inform it. KM is not doing a good job for us. Organizations are telling us that. Senior executives, senior management teams, we're being told we're not happy with what it is. So let's get ready for the change. Let's get ready for something else, but let's make sure that people are at the center of what we're talking about. Because ultimately, innovation, growth, resilience, sustainability, adaptive capacity, learning, knowledge, we're talking about people. And that, for us, is what the future of knowledge management is. Please let us know what you think. Uh, hopefully you enjoyed this video blog. And uh, I look forward to trying to do this again for you. Although I don't really enjoy sitting in front of the camera. Thank you.